Hello fellow producer, this is Onesto and today we're talking about a tape emulation plugin that has just the right amount of lo-fi, vintage, imperfect beauty to all your sounds. That plugin is Cassette from Waves Factory. In this video, I'm going to show you around the plugin. I'll do some demos and uh, I pretty much read the manual so that you don't have to. And hey, if you're new here, I release music production tutorials that motivate you to create. Uh, so if you want to hang out again, please consider subscribing. All right, there's a lot to cover, so let's just get right into it. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at this plugin. I love how analog it kind of looks. It has like the animation of this tape cassette going. So to show you what this thing can do, I have this e-piano set up. I have cassette bypass. Okay, so it's a vintage sounding. There's already like a lot of warmth in this uh, keyboard. But look, I'm gonna add cassette. I'm gonna unbypass it. And now take a listen. Yeah, I think it makes it sound uh, it's just so much better. Like there's so much character now in it. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the cassette and these tape deck models. So in a uh, cassette, we have four different cassette uh, types and they'll have their own look and feel to them. And besides just looking all nostalgic and pretty, uh, each cassette, each, each of the four types are going to have their own flavor of frequency response it's gonna have its own flavor of compression saturation and even like the, the hiss and noise and the same thing goes for the pro home and micro tape decks it's also going to have its own frequency response uh compression saturation and noise so what i want to do is play through this loop here and uh just cycle through these different cassette tapes and tape decks Yeah, so I love how they sound distinct from one another. I don't feel like you're really splitting hairs. All right, cool. So I can, you know, keep going on and on, but uh, it'll take forever. So the first thing I want to talk about is this input knob. So this input knob, what it's doing is that it's going to drive sound into this cassette player. And what that's going to end up doing is bring out more of the character from these tapes and these tape decks. So let me show you what I mean. See, sounds a lot more like kind of saturated. Sounds, sounds interesting, right? There you go. All right, so the next knob is this erasures knob. This erasures knob is uh, simulating what it's like if you got a uh, actual cassette tape and re like overwrote it like up to 20 times. And in real life, when you do that, uh, the tape will start to, the, the quality of it starts to diminish. Um, it's almost like it gets more muffled. Waze Factory, they said, like this is good to know, Waze Factory said that when they were messing with the Tascam, the Pro model, um, when they erased it up to 20 times, the tape still maintained its quality. So that's good to know if you're on Pro and you're adjusting this knob and wondering why nothing's happening. It's because a Pro level cassette uh, player is um, it's great and it's not going to wear out after a few erasures here. So I'm not going to have it on pro. I'm going to go on home and then we're going to adjust this knob. So that's 20 versus zero. 20. Next we have the spread knob and the spread knob is going to take uh, the stereo fill from 100% and then just make it down to mono. Uh, so let's just demo that. I like having uh, spread out mono and on micro. I feel like sometimes on micro, it sounds like it's just coming out of this tiny little cassette player. And I just think it just gives like a really cool like visual uh, to the sound. But I'm gonna just have it on home and have it a bit more narrow. Cool. I like that. So for now, we're going to skip the stability knob because uh, there's a whole lot to say about that. All right, so let's talk about these noise knobs. So we'll first start off with static and static is just the, the hiss that comes with uh, using a tape player. So let's go ahead and play it here. Yeah, so you can go, you know, overboard, which you don't really want to do. 
Great. All right. So for the dynamic noise knob, I'm just going to read my little notes here. So this is the kind of noise that's created by small imperfections in the surface of the magnetic tape. And this can make a mono source sound a little more stereo. So I think it's just a pretty cool thing to learn. Um, I'll just go from zero and increase it. All right, so let's talk about the stability knob, but I also want to change like genre gears like crazy. So now I have a, a whole bunch of loops I grabbed from uh, Splice, and now it's like this synth wave noir kind of feel. Ooh, spooky. Okay, so now I want to focus on the slow lead. Turn off the side chain thing. Great. So now let's talk about stability knob. So it's the stability knob and the artifacts knob. These are both a little interesting because you click this little gear icon and get this whole advanced panel. And uh, the stability knob, I like to see it as like a wet, dry a control for all the little sliders here and the wow and the flutter. And the artifacts knob, once again, it's a kind of like a wet, dry knob of this little corner, the degradation and dropouts and ran, or not random snap, but just de degradations and dropouts. So when you're using stability, when stability is at 100%, that's as if it were completely dry. So whatever controls you have here, they're not gonna come through because the tape is completely stable. At zero, that's like completely wet. So whatever you do here is gonna be done at its full force of what you adjusted here. So I have stability at 0%, which is like letting all the, the wow and flutter in and let's talk about Wow and Flutter. So Wow and Flutter, they they both do the same thing, just at different speeds. They're both messing with pitch fluctuation based off of an LFO rate. So Wow is gonna be messing with the pitch fluctuation, but it's gonna be done at a slower LFO rate. So let's just play this. So you hear the pitch fluctuation, or wobbly, but it's like a slower rate. So the depth is determining how much of that fluctuation, how far the fluctuation is going to be um, like oscillating between. Is oscillating the right word? Who knows? But um, I like having depth right here-ish. Great. And then Flutter is similar to WoW, except it's messing with the pitch fluctuation with the faster rate. This is the faster LFO. You can see how when this is like at this lowest, it's 8 hertz. Well, this is 1.46 hertz, so Flutter is just much faster. So you can already hear it. And then... So we'll drop this down a bit. All right, now it's time for stability randomness. And this little slider, I, I, I really like, I think this is a good one you should not sleep on. Um, the story behind this is that when Waze Factory was uh, creating this plugin, they were analyzing like WoW and Flutter across all these tapes and all this stuff. And they realized that um, the depth and the rate, uh, it's, it's not constant. There's a bit of randomness to it. So this stability randomness helps make uh, this plugin sound less like an algorithm just spitting out a result and make it feel more like an actual analog machine. Uh, so let's see. So you see at 100%, it does sound random. The zero percent it sounds more like constant, like like there's actually like like a, a pattern to it. So I like to increase this a little bit, make it a little too much. Great. So as I'm playing this over, you might be thinking like, "Whoa, this is still really heavy-handed." Of course, because we're at or zero percent. So I'm going to decrease this or increase this. Great, so now we have our like stable signal mixing in with our unstable controls here, and we were able to just dial it in. All right, before I go into the last controls of cassette, if this video is helping you out, like kind of like learn about cassette, if you feel like it's helping you determine if you want to like test it out or buy it, um, please let me know by liking this video. It just helps me know that uh, you like it, you know? Great. And the next thing, uh, I want to give everyone a chance here to help the other fellow producers. So. What are some tips? What are some other plugins that you use in your music to help things sound more lo-fi or, or vintage and imperfect? Please let us know in the comments below because I want us all to learn from one another. All right, time for the artifacts knob. Remember, this is similar to the stability knob in which 
this is like the wet dry of this little corner down here. So I'm going to uh, increase it from off to 100% so we can fully hear what's going on as we mess with this. So, uh, oh, we're also listening to this like pad layer. Kind of a pad, whatever. All right, so let's talk about degradation, depth rates, and then dropouts, depths, and rates, and this random snap slider. Okay, so this artifacts corner here is uh, simulating tape wear. And when tape gets worn out, um, you get these little quick dropouts. Um, and, and here, I'll just show you what this degradation depth. And you can hear how it's mostly affecting the higher frequencies that the, the bottom end, the low and the mids, they're still coming through, but it's just the highs that are kind of like dipping and peaking. What do you think is a nice little way to make something sound more damaged? And the dropouts depth and rate is really similar to degradation, uh, but the, the cutouts are much faster. Yeah, so they're... Yeah, they're like a lot more rapid and, and more often, which is a little too much for my taste. I'm gonna draw them back. Cool, I think it's feeling a lot better. And that brings us to the random snap slider. I like this one a whole lot. Um, what's unique about this slider, uh, there's a little exception in that it doesn't matter if artifacts is off or at 100%, random snaps is still gonna do its thing. And what this is simulating is when tape uh, gets stuck and, uh, and and then like quickly releases again. And when that happens, you get these small dips and increases in the pitch. So I will just play it for you because what I said doesn't do it justice. Let's hear it. Cool, so you hear those little... Yeah, so those like those quick like... <laughs> it's that, that stuff is all dependent on this random snap. So at 100%, it's gonna happen a whole lot pretty often. At lower amounts, it's gonna happen a whole less often. All right, so the last thing we got to talk about in the advanced panel is this bottom left corner. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I'll just a lot of these sliders I don't really mess with. I don't think it makes a big enough difference in the quality of the sound, but I will just kind of go through them. Um, there's a couple of knobs though that I actually kind of like a lot. So crosstalk, this is simulating when signal leaks from one channel to another. And then let's talk about azimuth. I have a little visual here just kind of describing what's actually happening. So uh, normally tape and a tape head, they run across one another perpendicular. But with azimuth, when you increase it either above or below, you are taking that tape head and like rotating it. So intermodulation. All you have to know is that this uh, is, is this can add extra harmonics to both sides of the frequency being modulated. All right, so that takes us to recus the recasset slider here. I like the slider a whole lot. This is something I actually do pay attention to. Um, this is what it's doing. So imagine you dial in your settings, you play it through, and you're still you wish that cassette had a stronger effect on uh, on the sound. And usually when that happens, you just go to your, you know, your, your chain here, duplicate the, the plugin and uh, keep duplicating until you're happy with it. But what uh, Waste Factory did was so kind. They just have this little slider, which is simulating like duplicating the, the plugin over and over again, up to four times. Cool. And the last slider is the mix knob, which or the mix slider, which is interesting because when I first got this plugin, I was wondering why there wasn't a mix knob on it. Like, where is it? Like usually, you almost always just have it like handy and ready to mess with. And here it's like tucked in this corner. And I think this is the reason why. I'm gonna drop this and you'll start to hear like a flangery chorus effect happening. Hear that? So I keep it at 100%. All right, that was a whole lot. There was so much that we talked about. Um, I'm just gonna play us out. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a nice, pretty sounding plugin. I, I like this one a whole lot. And if you're interested in uh, trying it out, you can get a demo for it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Waste Factory website. And the demo is pretty generous. Give it a shot. And then if you're interested, go ahead and buy this thing. Um, if you want to learn more about my favorite plugins, just click one of the videos here. And uh, if you're new, please subscribe. I would love to hang out with you again. You can stay caught up on all these plugins or other music production videos that I'm making. Um, I hope I can see you again, all right? Later.